Well, folks, it is lovely to be with you this evening, and I want to thank the Reverend Galanders for asking me along to have a word of testimony. And I was round the doors yesterday uh, trying to get people to come, and I think there's a few here tonight, so thanks very much for your support. And um, people often wonder if the same miracles which happened 2,000 years ago, if they can happen again today. Well, I believe that they can, because you're looking at a miracle here tonight, somebody whose life has been completely transformed by the gospel. And I love the Lord Jesus Christ with all of my heart. But I couldn't give him a test of money without first of all reading the scripture. So if you have a Bible, will you turn to 2 Corinthians, please? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and we'll begin reading at the verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. It's great to be in God's house tonight. It's great to be saved tonight. And I pray that you'll be blessed in your faith. Verse 14, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. The Bible says these lovely words, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let's pray. Father, I thank you tonight for the day and hour that you saved me and changed my life. And I pray, Lord, as I share my testimony tonight, that your people would be encouraged. But, oh God, I pray if there's a man, woman, young person, boy or girl, and they're not saved, they don't know you, I pray that this would be the night that they come to the cross and they find you as Lord and Savior. We'll give you the praise, we'll give you the honor, we'll give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Folks, it's verse 17 I want you to think about tonight as assure this word of testimony. Look at it, we are told, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. You see, when a man accepts Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, he gets a new life, he gets a new longing. Everything is completely new. He gets a new father, gets a new family, and he also gets new friends. His company has changed, his character has changed. He now has a love for God, a love for the Bible, a love for the prayer meetings, and even a love for his enemies. His temper, his tongue, and his temptations are changed. He's a new creation. The old life has gone. It's what the Bible calls being born again. And I can honestly say that being born again of the Spirit of God is the greatest thing in the world. And as I say, I pray if you're a Christian, you'll be encouraged here tonight. And if you're not a Christian, that this may be the very night that you come to know my Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. As you know now, my name's John Weir. I'm from the Donegal Road area in Belfast. Live right beside Windsor Park. And from a young age, my life was dominated by football. And was privileged to join St Andrew's Boys Club, who were based on the Shankill Road. And were the top team in Northern Ireland. And at 15 and 16, I was going to many different clubs, went to Rangers and Chelsea. And I was about to sign youth apprenticeship forms with Chelsea when I was 16. And disaster struck and I hurt my knee and I had to come home. And it was a real low point in my life. But then I recovered and went on to become the captain of the Northern Ireland Youth International Team. And the Linfield Youth Team at 19. And I was breaking into the Linfield First Team panel at 19 and disaster struck the second time, and I hurt my knee, and I had to stop playing football completely. I felt, I felt as if my life had fell apart. My friend, Steve Davis, Chris Brunt, were playing in the Premiership, and here's me at 19, unable to do the thing that I'd dreamed of. But you know, folks, looking back tonight as a Christian, I can see that God had a completely different plan for my life. And listen to what God tells the prophet Jeremiah in chapter 1 and verse 5. He says, Jeremiah, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. 
and I ordain thee to be a prophet unto the nations. You see, folks, God had a completely different plan for my life. And Jesus also said in Mark, in Mark 8 and 36, he says, For what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Can I just say, whatever is stopping you becoming a Christian here tonight, that is the very thing that you're selling your soul for. For some people, it's the drink at the weekends. For some, it's the drugs with their friends. For some, it's the boys in the club. It's the immoral lifestyle. It's the partying scene. It's even what your family will think. You know, hell is full of people tonight who knew the gospel, who knew Bible verses, who went to Sunday school, who sat in gospel meetings just like this, who even heard some of the greatest preachers that Ulster had to offer, and yet they carried on living their lives without the Savior. Jeremiah 8 and 20 tells us that the harvest is past, and the summer has ended, and we are not saved. You have many things in your life, but your soul is the most valuable thing that you have. I'm so thankful I'm an Abbot's Cross Congregational Church tonight, given a word of testimony, that on my way to hell, living an ungodly life. And you know, growing up, I had no Christian influence whatsoever. My parents were good people, but the more or less let us make our own decisions. Before I became a Christian, I was never near a Sunday school. I was never hardly in a church. I'd never read the Bible. I didn't even own a Bible. However, deep down, I still believed in God. When I looked at the stars at night, when I looked at the birds and the trees and the wonders of creation, I knew that there was more. And one Sunday night at this time, my life had a real low point. Things were going on within my family, and I cried out to God in my room. And I said, God, if you're real, will you help me in my life? And you know, A.M. Bounds is a great author on prayer, and he said there are prayers, but then there are desperate prayers. Isn't that the truth? There are prayers, but then there are desperate prayers. Have you ever been there yourself? Those prayers from the depths of your heart, with even the tears streaming down your face? Jeremiah 29, 13, God tells the prophet, and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all of your heart. That's the secret, isn't it? Seeking the Lord with all of your heart. I remember a presence coming upon me in that room and knowing that everything was going to be okay. And the way God had planned it, my mom at that time was working with a lovely Christian lady called Peggy Reardon. And Peggy told my mom that she was praying for our family. And Peggy attended White World Church, and that night I cried unto God. I knew I had to go to that church. Didn't know anything about it. I went onto the internet, got directions, asked my sister to take me, and she looked at me funny as if to say, what are you doing going to church? I remember putting my suit on and walking in. I was totally overwhelmed. James McConnell preached that night, and he spoke about the Lord as if he was so real. He spoke from the 53rd chapter from the prophecy of Isaiah. And this is Isaiah speaking some 750 years before the cross. And maybe you're here tonight and you're not a Christian. You've never heard these words before. Think about the Savior on the cross as I read them. Isaiah says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. You see, it was on the cross that the price for sin was finished, that sacrifices were finished, that Satan was defeated, that scriptures were fulfilled, and that death was vanquished. No wonder that great hymn writer Philip Bliss could pen these lovely words he wrote, Man of Sorrows. What a name for the Son of God who came, ruined sinners to reclaim. Hallelujah, what a Savior, bearing shame and scoffing rude. In my place condemned he stood. He sealed my pardon with his blood. Hallelujah. What a savior. I'm not ashamed to tell this congregation tonight that I love the Lord Jesus Christ with all of my heart. And I come under conviction of my sin. The first night, I can honestly say that I heard the gospel preached and I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. I remember going to the Faith Mission bookshop the next day to buy a Bible as I didn't have one. And then going out for walks and asking the Lord to keep me and to guide me and to teach me. 
as had nobody else. I prayed for my family and asked God to help me to learn his word. Remember going to church on my own and sitting there and wondering, have I ever ended up here? But you know, I laugh looking back now because when I got saved, sometimes the minister had finished preaching before I found the book in the Bible he was preaching from. <laughs> Anybody ever been there before? Well, that was me. But now I take gospel meetings all over the country, Bible studies, I go all over, I speak with Muslims, Legion of Mary, atheists, Mormons, Jehovah Witnesses, on the streets, and it really is amazing. And from that time, God has given me a burden for souls and to learn his word. My mom and my dad and my sister have all been saved since, which has been wonderful, and they're here tonight. My mom smoked and drank for 30 years, and now she loves and she serves the Lord. I used to bring home the DVDs of the services, and she came with me one Sunday morning. She had went to Sunday school, and the seed had been planted, but then she drifted away, and she committed her life back to the Lord around seven years ago. The drink and the cigarettes completely left within days, and it's wonderful to see the change in her life, and even to see the Lord using her in the city hospital where she works. And even just a few months ago, I was able to lead a work colleague of hers to the Lord when I was speaking down at the Belfast City Mission in Kilburn Street. And then my dad, he didn't believe, just lived for the weekend, and he was converted through a gospel leaflet. The Bible talks about when the Lord returns, there'll be two in a field, one will be taken, one will be left. There'll be two in a mill, one will be taken, and one will be left. He had a terrible dream, couldn't sleep for three days, and the Lord wonderfully saved him. Even the same sing Amazing Grace with the tears streaming down his face. Oh, that's the power of this gospel that we love. And it's wonderful to see the Lord using him in the city mission too. Can I ask you a wee question tonight? Where will you spend eternity if you die tonight? Would you go to heaven or would you go to hell? If the Lord returned tonight, would you rise to meet him in the air? Or would you be left behind? You see, you need to be ready. You need to have your life in order. I met a man, Ronnie Todd, a few months ago, was taking a meeting in East Belfast, and he was 92 years of age, and he served in the Second World War, and I asked him how he got saved, and he told me he was going to the bookies to do a bet in the Shankill Road, and he saw a Bible text up on the wall, prepare to meet thy God, and he said the Spirit of God pierced his heart there and then. You see, we need the Baratti. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 9 and 27, it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. And then my sister was going through a tough time in her life, and now she's accepted the Lord as her Savior. And it's wonderful to see her tonight with her children, and her wee children have accepted the Lord now as their Savior. And it's just beautiful, and it's wonderful to see the transformation. Can I encourage you tonight? Keep praying for your loved ones. God will have his time. Maybe you have a son. Maybe you have a daughter. Maybe you have a brother a sister, a husband, a wife, grandson, granddaughter. Keep praying for them because God will speak to them one of these days. And as I say, God has given me that burden for the lost. And it's been wonderful even to point souls to Christ on your knees in the street. You know, been to Ethiopia and Sweden and all over England and Ireland proclaiming this wonderful message. I'm just back from at Easter there, from Dublin and Galway, spend a lot of time on the Falls Road and different churches and mission halls. And even last week, a woman stopped me and she says, you told me not to marry a Muslim two years ago. And I come over to thank you. It was the best decision of my life. <laughs> Never knew a thing about it. Truly amazing. And I think of another wee man there recently in Newton Ards, and I gave him a gospel leaflet and he said to me, are they the lottery numbers? <laughs> I said, you're looking at a millionaire. He says, you a millionaire? I says, absolutely. My father owns the universe. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. I was in Cork there recently, and a wee man too. He said to me, I'm a Roman Catholic. I have no time for anything like that. I said, sir, I was a Roman Protestant before the Lord saved me. I was Roman in all the wrong places. You see, God's not interested tonight whether you're a Protestant, whether you're Catholic, Muslim, Hindu, or Jew. His word clearly states, you're saved or you're lost. You're saved or you're lost. And only you know tonight where you stand. I think of a man, Dave Hennessy, on O'Connell Street. When I first met him, he cursed at me and he swore at me. I've been witnessing to him for two years and now he's saved and baptized. And he's looking to plant a church in the Ukraine. 
think of Desi Grundle, a man 67 years of age, and he came to me one day and he said, John, I'm afraid of dying. Amazes me the number of people I meet who are afraid of dying. Maybe that's you tonight. Maybe you're afraid of dying. Maybe you're uncertain of the future. Maybe you wonder about death. Maybe you've got bad news. Well, tonight you can leave with peace in your heart if you want it. But Desi got on his knees with me in the middle of Queen Street, and I rang him the other night, and he's doing well, and he's serving the Lord. I think of Brian Smith, a man 44 years of age, and his wife rang me to pray with him on his deathbed. And I had the privilege after his death of leading his young daughter and then son to the Lord two weeks, and they came, two weeks after, and they came to me and they said, John, we want to see our daddy again in heaven. Was not lovely? And me and those precious young people got on our knees, and the tears were streaming down their face as they cried unto the Lord. I think of Katie Tumbleday, a young girl from County Westmeath, couldn't read, couldn't write, never knew the gospel. Now she's saved and she's baptized and she's on O'Connell Street every Saturday giving out tracts. And then my two wee aunties who are here tonight, they asked the Lord to save them after a meeting that took at Finnicky there recently. And it's just wonderful. Why am I telling you this? Just to encourage you that God is still in the business of saving souls and changing people's lives. So keep planting seeds. I meet many people all over, whether in Dublin or the Falls Road or the Shangle, and they say to me, heaven is full of good people. There's no chance for me. I tell them heaven is full of bad people who were made good before they got there. Isn't that the truth? Heaven is full of bad people who were made good before they got there. There's only one who is good, and his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. I would never be here tonight unless Peggy Reardon planted a seed into my family. God can use any of us tonight. Never did I think he would want to use somebody like me. Fanny Crosby, for instance, was blind. She wrote some 8,000 hymns. D.L. Moody worked in a shoe store and he became a great evangelist. Amy Carmichael suffered from a disease of her nervous system and was used in India. Gladys Aylward was a housemaid and was rejected by the missionary societies and used mightily in China. May each of us do what we can to reach this land with the gospel. That's my desire, that God would use me to reach this land with the gospel. You know, you really do meet some characters when you're on the streets. And I'm sure any of you do evangelism, you'll agree with that. I remember speaking with a wee woman a few months ago and she was listening really well and had my wee New Testament out and it was showing her all different verses and she was just staring at me. And I believed that she was going to get on her knees with me in the middle of the street and ask the Lord to save her. And I said, dear, is there anything that you would like to say to me? And she says, there is, son. I would just like to tell you that you have lovely eyes. <laughs> Well, I was ready for giving up the ministry after that. <laughs> but you know what? Pray for that wee woman. I often think of the people, though, that the Lord must have met around the villages and the cities that we don't know anything about. Looking back on my life, never did I think that I would be standing here tonight. But as Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. The old things have passed away and all things are become new. The miracle of the new birth. It's wonderful. Listen, maybe you're here tonight and your life is a bit of a mess. Maybe you're here and you're burdened about your life. Maybe you're here tonight and you would love to be saved. You would love to be sure of heaven. One time you used to be a Christian. Maybe you were brought up in the gospel, you went to Sunday school and you've lost interest. Well, Jesus is here this very night if you want him. Old Wesley wrote in 1739, he breaks the power of cancelled sin and he sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the foulest clean and his blood availed for me. 1 John 1, 7, you know it well, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood. Thank God for the blood tonight. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanses us from all sin. Has drugs bound you here tonight? He can set you free. Are you bound with alcohol? He can set you free. Are you mixed up in paramilitaries? He can set you free. Are you steeped in sin? He can set you free. Are you full of depression? He can set you free this very night. Have you got a rehab? No. But I believe when the Holy Ghost comes in, the devil goes out. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And whom the Son sets free is free Indeed, I've seen my entire family transformed by this wonderful message of the gospel, and he can do it for you this very night. 
Maybe you're here tonight and you're a Christian and you're even thinking of giving up. Listen to what old Spurgeon said. He wrote, by perseverance, the snail reached the ark. Isn't that good? <laughs> by perseverance, the snail reached the ark. Just keep going. Keep spending time in the book and cover yourself with the blood and he will help you. Stuart Hamlin was a drunk. He was a womanizer and he got saved in a Billy Groom crusade in the 1950s. And he was speaking with John Wayne one day on Hollywood Boulevard and telling him his testimony. And Stuart Hamlin wrote these beautiful words. It is no secret. What God can do, what he's done for others, he'll do for you. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. John Wayne said that sounds like a good song and the rest is history. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, he can change your life tonight. You can leave this very night with your sins forgiven. You can leave with a saviour in your heart and you can leave with a new song on your lips. I often say it, my name might not be in the Belfast Telegraph, but my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life and it is the greatest thing in the world. Heaven's going to be a wonderful place, isn't it? And I said the other week when I was speaking, when I get to heaven and get a new body, I might even be six foot. It'll be absolutely wonderful. You're looking at a wee man with a big God and he has changed my life in a great way. And as I say, I've said to the Lord, that's my desire. Use me, Lord, to reach this land with the gospel wherever you want me to go. You might say as a close, what have I to do to become a Christian, John? and experience what you have. Well, first of all, you've got to recognize that you're a sinner. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Secondly, you've got to receive Christ. We are told, but as many as received him, to them give he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Thirdly, you've got to repent. Repent and believe the gospel. Fourthly, you've got to remember the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. His son cleanses us from all sin. And then fifthly, you've got to rejoice. There is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. So I pray that this short word of testimony will encourage you in your faith tonight of what God has done in my life. And I pray that if you're not a Christian, even come and speak to me afterwards and you can experience this Jesus that transformed my life and my family. Tonight, I give him all the praise, the honor, and the glory for what he has done. There is nothing good in me. Where would each of us be tonight without his grace and his forgiveness? One old boy said when given his testimony, and I can say it tonight, he took me out of the mire and he put me into the choir. He took me out of the mire of my sin. And he put me into the choir. He's put a new song in my mouth. Or even as the wee Scotch woman said, it's better felt than telt. It's not the truth, those that are saved tonight. It's better felt than telt. You're not looking at much tonight, but I'm the son of a king. And you're the daughter of a king if you're saved. The Queen of England might not take any interest in you. Unless you live to 100 and you get one of those wee telegrams. But I belong tonight to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hannah prayed. He takes the beggar from the dunghill and he sets him among princes. So again, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to tell you what God has done in my life. The Bible makes it clear in Romans 10 and 13. Maybe this is you tonight. Whosoever, whosoever, put your name there. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's a wee chorus that has been on my heart the last few weeks and it sums up my testimony tonight. I will serve thee because I love thee. You have given life to me. I was nothing before you found me. You have given life to me. Heartaches, broken pieces, and ruined lives are why you died on Calvary. Your touch is what I long for. You have given life to me. May God bless you and thank you for your wonderful attention.